Okay, hello. Testing the sound. Hopefully it works. Not sure. Uh, if anybody is listening to the streaming, let me know if you can hear my sound. Alright. If nobody's there, that's fine. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the comment. Let me get started. Okay. Hello. So this is Junichiro Horikawa. Um, I am doing this weekly Houdini tutorial in YouTube Live currently. And this is the 23rd. Um, 23rd streaming version trying to do the Houdini tutorial live all right and let me explain today's topic today's topic is to create something a bit more looks like a mathematical um, visualization but looks more graphic something looking like this so this is an image I so I found on a Pinterest which I found it really interesting and was wondering how what the rule behind this this kind of illusional graphic and if I look at if I look at it really carefully the the rule underneath here it's pretty simple I thought if you look at each circles it's moving just left and right or up and down with some constant wavy um, function so that I thought I could use something like a sine function in order to move in order to create a move movement for each uh, circles and think about that and I think it's might be pretty easy to mimic this kind of movement using some uh, procedural way, mathematical way so I thought why not do it and why not try this out in Houdini All right so that's my uh, inspiration that's my motivation here and let me just show you the result that I made and so that you could have some image what kind of output I will try to show so this is a tryout that I made by looking at the uh, graphic from a Pinterest that I saw and I made some parameters so that you can control a number of uh, stuffs like number of circles you can control the number of circles you can also control the kind of a cycle how those each cycle uh, circle moves it's like a number of waves number of sine waves and you can also change the overall circle radiuses you can also change how how fast each circle moves to left and right for example such as the circle go left and right and you can also control the resolution of each circle like how many uh, stripes it has for each circle and as you can see it if I make this inertia the parameter inertia really low the circle tr uh, tends to be more circular each circle tr tends to be more circular but if I increase the number of inertia here the image which each circle creates looking like um, something like wavy, really wavy, like a pattern. 
in section view in terms of section view so that's what I would like to also implement which in which you can kind of see in this uh, image from uh, Pinterest All right so let's get started how to implement this in Houdini so to get started I'm going to prepare some of the stuff first of all I'm going to set the background to dark so that I can see a bit more and for now I'm going to set the camera view to perspective but as for final image I'm going to set the camera view to top view so that you can all you the illusion only um, available when you look at from the top but actually if you currently I'm looking this at from the top view but if I change this to perspective actually it is a bunch of twisted or waved cones cone geometry moving like this back and forth So in 3D, it is a bit, it's a bit interesting, but by making this composition, making all those um, sections, stripes at the same position for each sections, by looking at the top, it becomes very illusional. All right, so that's what I'm going to achieve here. You see that each tr cones is a moving like a wavy wait each cone is waving like this so that's that's kind of a uh, point here All right so let's get started All right so let's uh, let me first create a geometry node always and let's start by creating a null node where I store all the parameters which I want to use later to control the final output in one place. I'm going to color this to blue and let me create first parameter which is going to be the number of circles. So I'm going to use the integer, name this num and set the range from 0 to 100 for now All right I'll just have this one parameter for now and first thing I would like to do is to create a base um, center point of circle for each um, moving cones that you see in display okay so to do that, I am going to use Vex from scratch. Okay, so I'm gonna create attribute lower angle first and set it to detail so that it runs once. And first thing I would like to do is to plot the point like a circle in circularly. Uh, with the number of points I uh, have specified here. So if I set it to 25, 28 for number, then I want to have 28 points which create a circular uh, outline. All right, so let's name this space points. And first of all, I'm going to retrieve the parameter value num by creating a channel called num. Promote this by clicking this button. You have this number value here. Let's copy this parameter. Paste it right here. So that will be oops, uh, linked. All right. Now you have 28 uh, 
numbers here. So let's first create 28 points using for loop. Now I have um, tested this um, definition last night. Uh, I was also testing my streaming by without any sound, maybe just uh, background music. If you have seen it, that it's um, basically the same stuff. So if you have seen it, maybe you don't really need to see it again. All right. <clears throat> And okay, I have a comment here. Um, I'm late. Will I be able to watch it full later? Yes, for this um, streaming, I will leave the archive. I'll save the archive so anybody can watch it later on. And you can also download the HIP file, the Houdini file from the YouTube video description. So if you're anybody is interested in uh, moving it by yourself yeah, seeing the definition by yourself then you can download the file from the link in the description so please free to use it alright okay so I've used the for loop and first thing I would like to create is the angle for each point so I can calculate the angle from the i value divide it by a num multiply by since this will give you the, the value from 0 to 1 I can just multiply this with pi by 2 which is equal to 360 degrees as a result you'll have an angle value for each point from 0 to 360 degrees but uh, being calculated as radians in this case and use cosine and sine trigonometry to, in order to draw the circle so let's do that all right so first I'm going to draw a basic circle by setting an X using cosine angle multiply by some specified radius maybe I can have another parameter for radius let's set it to 1 for now that's for x and let's also create y sine angle multiply by radius okay now I have two um, values x and y I can create a position value using position uh, create by creating a vector set x 0 y and let's add the point to this position okay so now I have 28 points rotate it like this place circularly right now what I want to do next is to create a animation for each point so that you will have a animated circle something looking like this for each circle and if you look at it carefully you can kind of see that each point let's say this is the center and each point which goes around this center well, it's not really a center okay I don't want to scale this okay say so this is around the center and for each point I want to move this back and forth goes to the center and goes back to the outward same for these one go go, go to the center but, but go outside as well so going back and forth back and forth like this like wavy pattern and I want to control I want to kind of a, make a gap make an offset for each uh, points 
when to move each points so that you would have more like a this kind of wavy movement or this kind of wavy movement so let's try that first uh, using by extending this code that I wrote here All right so where can I do that the place where I define the radius of each point is this one this red so what I need to do is to control this radius value so I think it might be a good idea to create a multiplier for this radius maybe calling this multiplier as w and use another trigonometry like sine wave function to so to multiply with this radius so that the radius goes from 0 to some value like from 0 to rad or something okay so first of all I can think I can imagine that I could use this sine wave and inside a sine wave I want to animate it so I could also imagine I could use something like um, frame at frame global attribute which will change based on the timeline here so if it's if the timeline if the time step current time step is one you will get one at here and at frame if it's 82 you will have 82 so based on those information you can create easily create a procedural animation right and in order to create an offset <coughs> you'll need to give some kind of an offset right after you have this frame value so for the offset you also want to have this wave continuously uh, created you don't want any gaps between the first and end point for the wave height so you you gotta make sure that all the points will be continue continuously connected with the wave by multiplying the whole uh, value by 2 times pi which is equal to 360 degrees so first of all I'm going to multiply i um, divide i with float num so that the i value will be converted into the value between 0 to 1 based on the position of the points then I'll also multiply this by pi multiply by 2.0 so that you are made sure that this at least with this um, value you will have a value from 0 to 360 degrees for each point which will create one continuous sine wave So if you look at the, say you have like the circle and say this is the starting point and if the wave starts from zero degrees and use that sine wave to change the height, the first wave will probably goes from zero, then goes up and at the middle point right here goes down like this so I'll create something like this a wave something like this All right does it make sense so this is just this happens when the sine wave is used with 360 0 to 360 degrees this is 0 this is 90 degrees this is 180 degrees this is 27 to 70 if the sine wave is used in between 0 to 720 which is a multiplier double 
value of 360 degrees, then the wave will become doubled. The number of wave will be doubled, so you will have a wave something like this. If it's multiply by four, maybe if it's uh, the three zero from zero to three hundred sixty by four, then you'll have more wave like this. So, what you just need to do is to multiply this value by an integer value. So, I'll create a integer parameter. Let's name this cycle. Alright, so if it's one, that's just one wave. It's two, three, four, it's going to be on more waves. Right now I, am, I haven't changed the radius value yet, so nothing ha really happens. So now I, I have created this multiplier w which goes from minus 1 to 1 because I'm using sine. I don't really need to have a minus value here so uh, let's change this uh, range from minus 1 to a 0. So let's use fit function to fit this value from minus 1 to 1 to 0 to 1. Right. And then finally I am going to multiply this radius with W. And as a result you will have based on the number of cycles you will have a wavy pattern or maybe I should increase the number to see what's going on. Okay can see here and if I play all those points move to the perpendicular or from center to uh, outward direction it looks like it's rotating but it at what it's actually doing is that each point is moving just outward or inward back and forth the reason why it looks like it's rotating is because the speed of this back and forth is a bit too slow so okay sorry forgot to switch the um, <clears throat> right where was I okay I this is what I have done I needed to multiply the integer to this value here and in order to create a number of a cycles here the wave cycles here currently the sine wave is in between minus 1 to 1 so I'm using fit function to re rearrange this remap it from minus 1 to 1 to 0 to 1 and finally using this w as a multiplier for each point and each point if I play this right now it looks like it's rotating but actually what it's doing is that each point is just moving back and forth from center to outward at each point now as I said uh, the reason why it looks like it's rotating counterclockwise is because this frame that I'm using here in order to create an animation is a bit too slow so if I made this speed a bit faster it will look a bit a bit different so let's change this value uh, in, to in order to make it a bit more faster alright so what can I do for this maybe after I made the radiance value here I can multiply this with an integer named as speed to speed this up okay if, I, if it's one it was uh, it's same as before if, it, if I made this to two will be much faster be much faster and faster and faster 
Okay, let's keep this to two. Okay, now what I want to do next is to have a additional parameter. Right now, all the points go back to the direct center point, but sometimes it might it might gives you a better graphic when the point goes to just outside the center, like maybe a two point two. 20% uh, offset it from the center of so. So in order to do that, you just need to change this value here. So I was fitting this sine value from minus 1 to 1 to 0 to 1, but if I change this to 0 0.0, 0 0.2 to 1, then I can give a bit of space. When to control, when to, when those points come, uh, will stop when it goes back and forth. So I can parameterize this part as well, maybe name this min dist or something. Okay. So by controlling this, I can control the center gap right here and I can control the number of pattern right here now if I increase the number of cycles like this you can, can kind of see that um, you start to kind of uh, lose the whole uh, outline of this wave and seeing a bit more interesting point um, how do I say uh, trail right and by reducing the number of points as well and increasing the number of cycles sometimes you'll get this kind of interesting point um, trail it's based on the same uh, mathematical rule, but the movement looks totally different with different parameters. So that's what's really interesting about it. This one also looks interesting. This is pretty symmetrical movement. But if I change just one value, like for cycles to nine, the whole movement becomes really interesting. Right, and I'm going to set the end frame value to 360 degrees since I'm using this frame value in the speed in the uh, for the speed by making it 360 degrees I can make the end frame and first point to have the same point position so that it will have you will have a continuous looped animation All right okay so far so good for me All right now I can for now it looks good for me now let's try to create a cone geometry in order to create something more like a stripped image like you see in this Pinterest image so as I said, this this kind of um, circular illusional image could be achieved by creating a three-dimensional cone and looking from the top. And this three-dimensional cone should have a, a striped sections, black and white starts with black, maybe black, and then go to white, black, black, uh, white, black, white, black, like an off-the-roll. So that's what I'm going to create now in order to animate based on uh, using this animated point as a guide. So I'm going to create a cone and move that cone with this point. Right. So for the cone part, I'm going to use a bit more um, Houdini procedural way first creating a circle 
base circle lies on the zy, zx plane and probably I want to control the radius of this circle let's set it to prim polygon as well and let's set the division to really high value like 50 so that it will become a smooth circle uh, so let's also create some parameters for this circle such as circle radius okay I could also bring up the parameter that I have set here like the radius of each small circles the cycle of a wave a speed of each circles and min this uh, parameters like a center offset value and to do that I'm just going to click this gear icon check off this 4-bit linking parameters from the outside this subnet and then drag drop each parameter that I want to bring up All right let's bring this circle radius to the bottom let's also set the range for each parameters so for the radius for each small circle it is set it to from 0 to 1 that's fine I think for the cycle it's 0 to 10 maybe I can increase this to to 30 uh, for speed 0 to 10 could be should be okay min distance from 0 to 1 should be okay for circle distance circle radius um, maybe I can yeah maybe from 0 to 1 is fine maybe 0 to 2 let's set it to 0 to 2 all right okay now let's copy this side circle radius to a uniform scale of this circle that I've created here uh, it's going to be the the bottom plane for the cone I'm not sure if there is any cone geom primitive geometry I don't think so so I'm going to procedurally create the cone using for each loop that the reason why I'm also uh, the reason why I'm using for each loop is to also to have a striped uh, faces at each section at each section height so that I could I could later on color each stripes black and white black and white right um, I think I can use for each number for the loop okay hello everybody Thank you for watching. Okay, now I can have. I I think I can also set the parameters for the number of height, number uh, number of stripes for the cones. Right now it is set to ten, but maybe I can parameterize this as well. So let's go back to the controller. Give another parameter name. A stripe number or maybe I'm gonna name this H res meaning high resolution height resolution 0 to say 100 okay now let's set it to some values okay let me also save this so that I won't lose what I have done here uh, Let's name this Illusional Motion Graphics. All right. Uh, copy this high res, height res parameter. Go back to the for each end node. Paste the value to this iteration parameter channel. So that currently I have uh, 18, 19 iterations for loop. Okay, 
for this 19 iterations what I want to do is to scale each scale this circle step by step and combine them all together and create a lofted uh, geometry in order to create the cone-like geometry <clears throat> so let's first scale this geometry scale this circle base circle using transform and in order to scale this uh, circle step by step maybe bigger and bigger starting from scale 0 and make it bigger and bigger and finally it becomes 1 so that you will have a thing like you will have a circle pattern like okay something like this and if you look from the section view you want to also make this like this like a cone and as a result so say that each uh, circle is created as a curve then after leaving the loop I want to loft this curve together to create this cone like geometry and after that for each faces for each strips like this one this one this one and this one and this one I want to change the colors so first it becomes black second becomes white third becomes black fourth becomes white fifth becomes black and so on that's what I want to do right. okay so go back to the transform in order to make the range of scale from 0 to 1 based on the iteration uh, for each loop iterations I can refer to a detail attribute of this for each count if I look at this geometry node, geometry spreadsheet, there's a detail attribute called iterations. So this value will start from 0 and end at 18 if the number of iterations is 19. So I can make an expression based on those value. All right, so go to the uniform scale here. I could write some simple expression for each iterations. So first, first of all, I'm going to retrieve the iteration attribute value from a for each count. I'm going to use a detail uh, function for each count iteration zero, and that's going to be a value from zero to eighteen. And by dividing dividing this using detail another detail attribute called num iterations I could get a value between I could convert this iterations for, to 0 to 1 so uh, for each count num iterations 0 now this num iteration is uh, 19 in this case so and the maximum value of this iteration is 18 so it will never be 1 in order to make the range it to be from 0 to 1 I have to sub divide this num iterations by 1 and use that for division to make the range it to range from 0 to 1 for the scale All right let's check this out and let's also set the circle to open arc so that it will be it will be a curve so that I can also see the result better okay I see that I have created a 19 layers of circle you also have a point in the center as well I think yeah right here so it is working now what I want to do next is to 
give the height for each circle as well so that it looks like a cone okay now for that it's basically I'm just doing I'm just using the same expressions that I have wrote here so I can just copy this copy this parameter and use this for this y value paste relative reference as you can see that it looks like um reversed cone reverse directional cone so i'm going to multiply bit by negative value so that it will have a cone sitting on the ground all right looks good now the next thing i would like to do is to in order to uh, check in order to um, give a color for each sections I I need to have some information for each point at each height so that I can know that which point I should change for the color which face which primitive I should change in to be a black or to be a white so I'm going to use a point wrangle and I'm just going to apply a really simple ID attribute to each point which creates this cone like uh, shape and that ID is given by an iteration value from this for each count so First of all, I'm going to retrieve the iteration value from the detail attribute from second input, which is for each count. Oops. Like this. So this will be a value between 0 to 18. And I am just directly apply this value to the ID, the name of the attribute called ID for each point which I've just created here say so if I check this geometry spreadsheet at point I have new attribute called ID goes from 0 to 18 right now right now it's just 18 but if I leave the loop it should goes from 0 to 18 like this right and I can use this value as a guide to color the final uh, output now right now it's just a bunch of curves creating a cone like shape so I need to connect all those curves together to create an actual cone like shape cone like geometry so I'm what I'm going to do is to use a node cold skin which is pretty handy you can directly connect those curves together to create this lofted surface looks good right now there's going to be a bunch of uh, duplicated points at the po at the center point right here and if I check the number of points here you have you can kind of see that there are multiple points right here so that might not be necessary I can merge those together using a fuse node so that the number of points will be reduced from 969 to 901 not that much but better than nothing right now it's time to color this cone using a from top to bottom black and white All right and the I'm going to since I'm go I would like to change the color based on the the position of faces is uh, height of the position height of each faces height of each strips I am going to change the primitive color so I'm going to use a primitive wrangle to do that primitive wrangle let's name this color okay and since the now 
that I would like to do, uh, if I use this primitive wrangle, it is looking at each faces, right? Like for example, this face. Now in order to check uh, which position this face is on, uh, what I can do is to first get the point information of which uh, creates this face. So this point, this point, and this point, and this point. And each point, you will, you should be able to get this ID value here. So by retrieving one of the ID from the top or at the bottom, you can kind of uh, see that you can kind of use that value to determine whether this strip should be black or whether this strip should be white. So if the top strip should be black, then then you always have to uh, you're kind of assured that each point at each top point of faces of each faces should be a even number. So the idea of uh, top point which creates this face should be an even number. In this case this is ID 0 so this is black. Uh, and if this is the strip that you're looking at this is ID 1 so that's odd number it should be white. For this strip this ID is 2 so that's even number so that should be black and so on. So that's how I'm going to determine which strip should be black or the, which strip should be white uh, programmatically. All right, maybe there's a easiest easy way to do that, uh, but yeah, let me know if there's any easy way to do that. That's just my way, and that might be a a bit more hardcore way. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to retrieve all the points. Uh, creating this each primitive using prim points all right and uh, let's get the um, maximum or minimum ID retrieved from this each point so basically I should have either four points or three points for each faces and what I want to do is to first get all the ID values for uh, all the points uh, creating this primitive and by looking at each ID I want to get the minimum or maximum ID value and use that ID to determine that if it's on the if it's the odd number or even number and use that value use that information to make it white or black okay so maybe I should uh, I will get the maximum ID value for from each from all the point that creates each faces so as a result uh, first I'm going to create a parameter or attribute uh, variable named as my max ID starting minus minus one if and if I found any value greater than max ID I'm going to update this max ID Okay, look through at each point, look through each point. Okay, let me know if I'm explaining too much. Maybe I do. That's why I'm taking this too much, too much time. Um, yesterday I've tried the stream without any voiceover and if you think that's a better way to make a live stream let, let me just know maybe because that's also much easier for me to do because I don't need to I don't really need to explain anything for that but if you need some explanation I will try to do that Okay, now I have okay. Now I have retrieved the max ID looking writing like this. Um, I have just retrieved the ID for each point, and check if the retrieved ID is greater than max ID right here. If it's if it is so, then update this max ID with 
<coughs> the current ID, the current uh, greater ID. So if I, by uh, ending this loop, I am getting the maximum ID value for one of the face that is calculated on. So in this case, should be if it, if this if this is ID sixteen and if this is ID seventeen, I should be getting a ID maximum ID seventeen for this face. All right, and finally, I'm going to check if the max ID I have retrieved here is odd number or even number. If max ID is uh, Calculate the modulus by two to check if the if it is even number uh, odd number. If I calculate the modulus with max ID by two, then and if it's equal to zero, then that means it's even number. So in this case, um, I think this value. So if it's this is ID 0 and this is ID 1 and I should be getting this value for this triangle faces so if this is equal to 0 that means it's uh, on this place right here so if you're looking at the triangle it should be equal to 1 in this case because this is ID 1 and by calculating by calculating the modulus by 2. This value should be 1 for this triangle. So if, I, if you want to make this triangle black, then if it's if it's become even number, then the, this color should be white. I think. Let's check that. So if it's even number, the color should be um black okay all right looks good okay okay thank you for the comment yeah i will try to make a voiceover even though i explain really badly okay let's try to look at the top view and see how it looks like now what i don't like about this is that i this Thing has a shade right here because I'm use I'm making it as a 3d object but in order to make it more illusional I want to remove all those uh, shaded uh, information so in order to do that I'm going to uh, turn off some of the uh, default settings for this uh, display first of all mm, let's say I think I can turn check this one to disable the color disable the lighting and that this will give you a flat shading now the white part looks a bit too grayish so let's type D and bring up the display options go to a material set the diffuse to white so that it will be a brighter color now let's also remove this grid information all right looks looks like a 2d image but if you look from the perspective it is actually a 3d object okay now the basic shape of the cone is ready it is time to uh, move uh, use move this cone using the animated point that I have created before previously this one Now the simplest uh, operations you might could think of is to just use copy to points, but that this doesn't really gives you any interesting shapes. Well, it is interesting, but it doesn't give you much uh, freedom for the final output. because all the cone looks really rigid doesn't really move like a wavy pattern like this 
So, in order to control the movement of this cone more organically, I need to have more information for the point created from this uh, base point fun uh, attribute wrangle, detail wrangle. And what I want, what I want to do is to let me explain uh, by from the perspective. Okay. What I want to create is a movement for the cone. It's something like this. Let me explain in sketch. So when the cone moves to left or right, I want to move this cone. Make the top part of the cone move faster and the bottom part of the cone moves slower. As a result you'll get something like this kind of shape and at some point the point the tip point will bounce back and forth like this. At, at some point the tip point will bounce faster than the bottom so at some point you'll get a shape something like this and slowly the bottom part will try to follow the top part movement will give you kind of a interesting movement for each uh, cone like this. Yeah, so this kind of a wavy movement for each cones is what I want to achieve. Now to do that, I need some extra information for each point how far the bottom part should move based on the top part movements and currently I only have a single movement for each cones right here as you can see here and that is controlled using this uh, multiplier called W okay uh, I need to, uh, okay, I have a comment here. Your screen share flickers on even blue with, even with blue tint. Okay, maybe I have some problem with the cable or something. All right, uh, well, sorry for that. I will try to fix it till next week. Okay, so what I want to do here, uh, again, sorry to say this again, I. What I want to do here to, is to control this uh, W value here, which is a multiplier to control the movement of each point. And currently I have a single movement which is uh, corresponds to the, the tip movement of each cone. So as I, as I look at this, each cone is directly controlled by each point. A whole movement of the cone is directly controlled by each point. And that gives a bit more rigid movement, but in order to make it more organic, what I need to do, what I could do is to add additional uh, position information to each point, like a trail. And use that uh, trail information to move each section of the cone to move differently. So at the top part it moves to the left really fast but at the bottom part it moves to the left a bit slowly and the the third section strip point will move a bit more slowly and so on. So to control that I need to have a 
a exact number of points uh, equal to a number of strips on if you look from the side view right so in this case I have I think 19 sections 19 sections so I need to have 19 points which have different speed moving back and forth to control in order to control this uh, movement for a single cone now I only have one here so this means that I need to have 18 more um, speed information created inside this for loop so that's what I'm going to do but I don't, I don't really need to have like additional 18 points at each loop but I actually can that could be just be a 18 additional attribute values and stored it as an array at each point at each single point so that's what I'm going to do the reason why I'm doing it like that is because that's going to be a less um, expensive okay uh, thank you for the super chat KMA3D right so let's do this okay uh, let's go back to the detail node here okay so first of all in order to do that I'm going to first get the height of uh, I mean the number of strips for each cone by accessing to a parameter called height resolution okay which I have created right here 18 19 okay paste it right here so that it will be linked now I'm going to create a second loop inside this and the position the place where I want to create the second loop is right before creating this multiplier which controls the speed of the point so uh, for integer n equals 0 and is less than h res plus plus so I will be having a 19 additional loop for each point that I've created and until somewhere right here probably but as I said I don't need to create 18 more additional points so for the point I could just create one initial point when the n is equal to zero like this and probably use this pt later on so I'm gonna leave this pt like this and define the variable pt just before get it into the loop like this so as a result if you leave this loop you will get a you will get this pt filled all right and what you want what I want to do uh, inside this loop is to create a positional create a positional information for each point each point on the circle on top of the circle and which uh, and use this loop to create a kind of a trail like point list in order to control this cone movement so what you will get is kind of a, a snake like point array in which that each point speed is different by changing the, the step speed of this multiplier value 
So by using n at some somewhere in this w, I will be able to I should be able to get a offset at point information <clears throat> in order to control the shape of this cone. So where I where could I do that? Since this is going to be animated movement, I think I can use n at I can use n inside this radiance value and multiply uh, add, adding n to a frame and also multiply this n by some parameter which is going to uh, be the value a parameter value to control the offset how far how far each point should be uh, separated at each uh, section at each height if it's zero then all the points movement will be static all the point movement all the point speed is equal if it's one then you will just have a slight offset at each height so you will you'll just have a slight uh, wavy pattern if the value of this parameter is high then you will have more wavy pattern more strong wavy pattern so I'm going to name this inertia and starting with one for now okay and as a result you will get a new w value right here and you'll create a position value here uh, create the add points right here when the n is equal to zero so what if what happened if n is not equal to zero so that's when you want to uh, store this position as an attribute value so that you can later on add it inside this point newly created point as an array so first create a um, vector array variable maybe named as a guise empty array and at each loop I'm going to push this position value to this guise array like this right and if I leave the loop as a result you should be able to get if if it is if hres is equal to 19 then 19 different position information is stored inside this guise 19 point information having different kind of speed different kind of multiplier is going to be stored inside this guise and what i want to do now now is to store that uh, guise attribute vector array to this point that I've created. So the number of points that I'm going to create isn't going to change but the uh, additional attribute is being is has been created using this new loop. I'm gonna name this guys. And let's also check the length of this attribute to see if this is really equal to 19. This doesn't really necessary but this is just a check. Okay let's check going to the point wrangle and let's see that the number of point is currently 30 haven't changed but I have additional guys attributes right here and the number of attribute is number of this array is 19 at each point so and that is equal that is also equal to a number of uh, height strip right here for each cone okay so this is just to check glen is ju just to check if this number of array is um, 
19 or so but it is not really going to be used later on so if you don't need it if you find it you don't need it you can comment this out right and I'm not going to use this copy to point but instead I'm going to use a custom um, customly created point wrangle in order to use this guy's information to actually morph uh, deform this cone geometry and to do that I'm just going to test with one point because that's going to be easier to check so I'm going to set the number of point on the circle to be one so you currently you have just one value right here right and this each uh, this single point still has a guy's array and if you have 19 uh, high resolution height resolution 19 height strips you will also have 19 uh, vector position uh, which is defined by this loop right here by having different kind of multiplier by offsetting with this inertia value parameter okay so now it's time to use this point to move to deform this color cone uh, striped cone and to do that I am going to use point wrangle okay uh, I have a question what is glen attribute I'll use set if it or its native Houdini attribute uh, or use store info to glen attribute yeah it's not a native attribute it's just the customly made um, attributes that I have just created so it's just a temporal stuff you don't you don't really need to create that actually yeah okay so let's connect this cone to a first input of this point wrangle and then um, <coughs> connect this point currently I have only one point and connect this to the second input right now luckily at each point of the cone you have an uh, information called ID which defines the actual height information of each uh, strip at each point so if it if the point is at the bottom then the ID is equal to 18 if it's the point at the, at the top then the ID is equal to 0 so I can direct uh, I can directly use that information to determine which point is where it which point is at which height and I can actually use that as an uh, index value as well for the array in order to retrieve the position information from this guides array which currently I have 19 positions stored in guides attribute at each point so <clears throat> first of all I'm going to get the uh, point information point position information from the second input so point uh, second input p zero since I only have one point All right and I could also mm, um, maybe I don't need to re I don't really need to get the point position what I need to get is this guy's array attribute with this one from the second input so vector guys point from second input named guys zero right so now I have now I have retrieved the guys array vector array from this point attribute now I want to get the single guide information from this guys by using an attribute of each point ID 
from the cone. So that is easy. You can get the guide using a i at id. So this is the id stored inside a cone point. As a result, you should get a corresponding guide information, the position information from this array. And finally, you can update the current position of cone, current point position of the cone using this guide. As a result, you will have a animated cone goes back and forth at some direction and the speed of the top and the bottom is somehow offset it or different and if I make this inertia parameter bigger the effect of wavy pattern will get stronger and stronger and stronger like this interesting isn't it so I have just done with one um, cone what I just need to do is to use uh, this same method for all the points which I am going to create it from this attribute wrangle so if I have 30 points what I just need to do is to do the same operation that I have done it here 30 times using the same cone so to make it simple I'm just going to use a for each number for each point so that at each loop I can just get one point and for that point I can connect this to the second input of this wrangle let's name this deform cone and leave this loop like this and as a result you'll be able to control the all the points with deformed cone like this Okay, and that's pretty much it. If now uh, let's also, let's try to parameterize some of the stuff that I haven't yet. Um, there's an inertia parameter right here. I want to bring this to the null controller as well. Let's open up the null controller. Uh, edit parameter interface check off this 4-bit linking parameter and drag and drop this inertia parameter that I've created right like this okay and whoops where did it go and apply accept and all the stuff is ready if you look from 3d it doesn't really look interesting maybe but if you look from the top view the visible is somehow illusional and that is pretty similar looking to what I have found in from the Pinterest like this one so all the credit goes to the guy who created this image first I have just mimic this image to create it procedurally right and you can control the parameter like this um, making first of all control the number of small circles using this number control the radius circle cycle this is also interesting Yep. All right, and make maybe make the inertia a bit more lower. Make the I mean distance. Yeah, this looks like an eyeball. <laughs> mm. Love it. All right. Okay.
Yeah, that looks good as well. And you can also set the speed faster. Maybe that's too fast. You can also control the number of uh, strips. This becomes more, mm, more like a logo-like pattern. This looks more <laughs> illusional. Yep, that's much it. Uh, hopefully you find this interesting and that's pretty much it for today if you have any questions let me know uh, you can if you if you found this interested you can actually download the file that I've created previously from the video description of the YouTube video page so feel free to download it and use it for your purpose Maybe it's also interesting to print this out in a paper or something, or use it as a sc screen uh, saver. All right, that's it. This was a bit more simple mathematical operation but used for graphic and I've, I found this really fun I hope you found this fun as well if you make this inertia zero it becomes more solid the movement becomes more rigid it still look interesting but not so more increasing the inertia is a bit more interesting yeah I like this better Yeah, I can play this. Okay. Okay, I guess there is no questions. I would like to end the live at here. Thank you very much for, thank you very much all for watching and give me the comment that I am really appreciate it. Thank you very much for the uh, super chat as well. <coughs> All right. Um, hopefully, I'll see you next week as well. I will try to find something interesting for me again. All right. Good night, everybody. It is night in Japan, and it's really hot here. Yeah, I don't want to go outside. Right. Good night.